Just a couple of weeks ago, the New Orleans Pelicans seemed dead in the water. It looked like they were done for the year, with Zion Williamson out for a while, uh, Brandon Ingram just getting back. And they were quite a few games under 500, and it looked like they were down and out for the count And when it came to the playoffs. However, Zion Williamson is supposed to be uh, coming back here shortly, hoping to be back for the playoffs. And if the other three members of the Big Four can keep them afloat, can keep them in the playoff race, I think they're a dangerous team to watch for, uh, especially if you know, Zion comes back, maybe Dyson Daniels starts to play a little better, you already got Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, this could be a team to watch for in the NBA playoffs if they are able to make it in, so make sure to stick around for, for the end of the video because that is what we are going to be talking about, uh, make sure to like button and leave me a comment, now let's go ahead and get started looking at what is wrong with this Pelicans team. Started 18-8, and eight. they were looking really good early on, they even were the number one team in the Western Conference, and since then they have been 18 and 29. Injuries have killed them. Brandon Ingram's been hurt. Zion's been hurt for a large majority of the year. Now they've won three win three games in a row, though. Um, so maybe the tide is starting to shift. They are still six and seven since the NBA trade deadline. Um, but hopefully here they can get things rolling right before the playoffs start. Just get hot at the right time. Zion's supposed to be back soon. Reevaluated in two weeks. And they are so much better with him. 18 and 8 with him, 18 and 29 without him. Um, so obviously, I mean, 26 points per game, seven rebounds, 5.3 assists per game for Zion. One of the best young stars in the league. When he is healthy, he's only played in 33% of his potential games in the NBA. Um, shooting at 61% from the field, 37% from three. He's so efficient. I mean, he doesn't even average one three per game. But he's just so efficient when he gets it inside. That's, I mean, that makes the Pelicans offense just that much better. It frees things up for Brandon Ingram even more. Uh, CJ McCollum, guys like that. He's only played in 29 games this year, 22 years old, so still one of the young stars in the NBA. And yeah, it's not looking good for the Pelicans without Zion. But if they can get him back, remember, they were the best team in the Western Conference with him for the first 25 games of the season. So... They get him back, they roll through the play-in tournament, maybe they upset like the Sacramento Kings or something if they can hold on to the two-seat. We shall see. Uh, but even if they don't, they still have a large amount of picks for the next few years. This year, they have their own and the uh, Lakers pick. That is a pick swap, so whichever one is more favorable. Uh, and then in 2024, they have the Lakers pick unprotected, Milwaukee's first-round pick and their own. 2025, they have their own and Milwaukee's. So that's the next three years. You also have a lot of second round picks to go on top of what, six first round picks? Because of course the one this year is a pick swap. And then in 2026, you have your own Milwaukee's. 2027, you have your own in Milwaukee's. So a lot of picks there from the Drew Holiday trade. You're still getting uh, paychecks basically from the Anthony Davis trade. This is still, you know, there's still a lot of hope for the future here in New Orleans. Now, the big three of this season that has been playing in the majority of the games is led by Brandon Ingram, averaging 24 points, 5.1 rebounds, and 5.2 assists per game. He's been very good for the Pelicans, one of the bright spots on this team, 48% from the field, 39% from three, and he also averages about a steal per game. CJ McCollum has been good as well ever since coming over from the Blazers. He's been a big part of this Pelicans team. 21 a game, 4.5 rebounds, 6 assists a night. He has been out there doing his thing. Uh, and then shooting at 43% from the field, 39% from 3, also averaging a steal per game. And then you also got Jonas Valanciunas down there in the paint. Paint beast, 14.5 a, a game, 9.6 rebounds, 2 assists a night. So he's been playing very good basketball as well even though he is in limited minutes uh, he's a monster for the fact that he only plays 25 minutes a game shooting at 54 percent from the field and even stretching it out uh, 35 percent from three now the big move that they made at the deadline was to send off Devonte graham and bring in josh richardson i thought that they would probably be trying to get rid of uh, Devontae's contract and they do to bring in Richardson who's averaging 8.6 points per game and 2.6 rebounds to go along with two assists a night for his short stint with the Pelicans so far this year uh, he you know obviously a good two-way player 42% from the field 37% from three in 24 minutes per game and of course he has played in 14 games so far 
with the Pelicans. He has been on playoff teams in the past, so he does have that experience. Hopefully, he can come in and give them a boost as that veteran addition at kind of the midseason mark. We saw them do a little bit of the same thing, bringing in a veteran guard in C.J. McCollum last year at the deadline. Uh, obviously, Josh Richardson is not quite at the level of C.J. McCollum, but still, at least they're trying to make a move. Trey Murphy uh, is also very good, if you did not know. An absolute sniper. 13.5 points a game, 3.7 rebounds. Shoots at 48% from the field, 40% from three, 1.1 steals. Part of that next generation of NBA wings. Trey Murphy, Herb Jones are two of the best, in, two of the young best players in the league. 7.2 points per game, 5.6 rebounds for Larry Nance. Here as we're looking at the supporting cast right now that are also uh, very elite when it comes to defense. 62% from the field, 37% from three. A steal and a block for Nance every single night. And then Jose Alvarado, who should be coming back soon as well. Nine points per game, three assists, 2.4 rebounds per game for him. So overall, this is a deep Pelicans team when they are not injured. 41% from the field, 34% from three. 1.2 steals for Jose. Again, supposed to be coming back sometime in the next week, or he might actually already be back by the time this video is out. Uh, but this team is so deep, it's just they need that superstar player in Zion. They have the role players, it's just Zion cannot stay healthy. Uh, Najee Marshall, 10 points per game, 3.8 rebounds, 2.6 assists. They have so many wings in New Orleans right now, it's kind of wild that they are not winning games. 44% from the field, 31% from 3-1 and one steal for Najee Marshall this year, and then you also got... Herb Jones, who is one of the best young defenders in the NBA, coming out of Alabama. I thought he was going to be good. I did not realize he was going to be this good this quick. 10 points per game, 4 rebounds, 2.1 assists. That might not pop off the stat sheet at you, but he's not a scorer. He is a lockdown defender. Straight Jacket Jones, 44% from the field, 30% from three, but 1.2 steal, or excuse me, 1.6 steals per game for the Pelicans this year. Now let's take a look at what they have to do to get into the playoffs. Currently, at the time of this recording, they are in a four-way tie for eighth place in the Western Conference, but a loss drops them down into 11th. So it's going to be close. It's going to be right down to the wire. They are also only about three games out of fourth place in the West, uh, but they are also about four games out of 13th place in the West. That is how close it is right now. Um, you know, the Lakers, Mavericks, and Thunder are currently tied for them with the Jazz half a game back and the Timberwolves half a game ahead. So six teams right there all competing for that one spot. Looking at the rest of the way for the Pelicans. Uh, they got the Clippers today at the time of this recording, and then they play the Trailblazers, the Warriors, and the Nuggets. That's a tough four-game stretch. They're going to have to find a way to win two of those and then somehow find a way to win three of four games at home against the Clippers, Kings, Grizzlies, and Knicks. This is a very, very tough nine-game stretch to end the season for the Pelicans, obviously, they're wishing they had that game against Houston back on March the 17th that they did lose. Um, so, yeah, it's a tough stretch for the Pelicans. They're going to need to hope that Zion comes back as quick as possible just so they can make the play in and have an actual chance to get in. Brandon Ingram, he's going to continue to do his best to carry the load. Herb Jones, he's been playing very good defense as well. But yeah, with that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment down below. It really helps out in the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.